What's up everyone, in today's e-waste adventure, we're going to be taking a look at this mid-2008 MacBook and see if we can drag it kicking and screaming into the modern web using Chrome OS Flex. I recently picked up this MacBook for just shy of $25 shipped on eBay. It features a 2.4 GHz Intel Core 2 Duo processor, two whole gigabytes of memory, and a 160 gigabyte mechanical hard drive. It came installed with Mac OS X version 10.7, which is the highest version of Mac OS this machine can run that is officially supported by Apple. Now it's been about 12 years since Lion has received any updates, and while there are still some browsers out there that can run on such an old version of Mac OS, I wanted to install a modern operating system on this computer. Now I'll admit, when looking for a modern operating system to install on computers this old, Chrome OS is probably one of the last ones to come to mind. Typically most people, myself included, would recommend installing some flavor of Linux on hardware this old. But I wanted to give Chrome OS Flex a try and see if it can revive this 16 year old laptop. Now for those who may not know, Chrome OS Flex is a version of Google's Chrome OS for non-Chromebook x86 based computers. It seems to be geared more toward enterprise environments in a way for them to get some more life out of existing hardware and as a way to introduce them to Google's Chrome OS ecosystem. Google has a list of certified computers that they guarantee to work, but unsurprisingly, this machine is not on that list. However, it can be installed on machines not on the list, they just won't receive support from Google. Now the system requirements for Chrome OS Flex are actually quite low, yet this laptop in its current state fails to meet them. Chrome OS Flex only requires a 64-bit processor, 4GB of RAM, and 16GB of internal storage. That's it. The requirements page also notes that certain Intel GMA graphics chips don't meet performance standards, but the Intel GMA X3100 chip on this laptop isn't listed, so let's hope for the best. The requirements page also helpfully points out that, quote, Components made before 2010 might result in a poor experience, but I'm not going to let that stop me. Even though this laptop has half the required a minimum amount of RAM and a spinning hard drive, I'm going to see if Chrome OS Flex can give any sort of usable modern web experience on this $25 Mac. We'll hold off on upgrading this machine for another day. Creating the Chrome OS Flex installer is a simple and straightforward process. I simply downloaded the image from Google and used a program called Belina Etcher to write the image to a flash drive. That was it. Once the install media was created, it was time to install the OS, which went a lot more smoothly than I thought it would. I simply booted the MacBook while holding the option key and selected the flash drive as the boot device. After a bit of a delay and a display error that, for a brief moment, made me lose hope in this project, I was presented with the Chrome OS Flex splash screen. And after some more waiting, it was onto the installer. Once there, I immediately noticed some major delays when using this laptop's built-in trackpad. The mouse pointer kept freezing as I moved it. Besides this minor annoyance, I could tell the Core 2 Duo was not happy, but I soldiered on. The only two options presented to the installer were to try Chrome OS Flex in a live environment or to install it. Of course I chose install. I was surprised there were no options to partition the drive, dual boot, or even select where I wanted to install the OS. It just went straight into chugging away with the install. And boy did it chug. While the install only took six minutes, I could hear that mechanical hard drive doing its thing that whole time. Once the install was complete, I was presented with a 60 second countdown timer until the computer would shut down. Annoyingly, there was no option to shut down the computer manually, so I patiently waited the whole minute until the installer shut down the computer on its own. Once shut down, I removed the flash drive, crossed my fingers, and pressed the power button. I had a brief moment of panic when the computer claimed it couldn't find a boot device, but soon I was greeted with that old familiar video mode error and then a glorious splash screen. After what seemed like way too long of a boot process, I guess I'm spoiled by these newfangled SSDs, I was greeted with the welcome screen and it was on to setup, which consisted of connecting to the internet, logging to my Google account. After some more waiting and signing my life away to my new overlords at Alphabet, I was ready to do some more waiting. I set a hard no thanks to Google Assistant, set my preferred theme, and was launched right into Chrome OS. And, well, it sure is Chrome OS, just as familiar to me as when I used a Chromebook back in school. And the first thing I did after changing a few settings was launch right into YouTube and see how well this ancient piece of post-power PC shit can handle YouTube playback. And, well, 
It did the thing. Loading the actual site took way longer than what I'm used to, but once it launched the video, playback was overall pretty smooth, with only minor hiccups, especially when going into full screen. But that's to be expected on a machine of this age. I'll go over YouTube playback a bit later in the video, but let's see how usable this MacBook is for other modern web tasks. It was able to handle basic web browsing just fine, albeit with some definite slowdowns. I was able to look at all the latest news and read about the sunshine and rainbows that make up current events in this world. To that end, I had no problem streaming audio from my local public radio station so I could hear about all those current events live and in stereo. Doom scrolling on social media was also no problem for this machine. I was able to waste time browsing Reddit while I had the aforementioned streaming audio open in another tab. Yay for multitasking. Browsing Wikipedia was no problem. Cool! Now I can research my term paper. Speaking of which, typing a document on Google Docs is a feat this laptop can handle. Uh, adequately. Loading times were of course slow and it took it a while for it to catch up to my very average typing speed. But once everything was loaded, it performed as well as you could expect. In fact, a good portion of this script I'm reading right now was written on this laptop, so there's that. But now on to where this laptop truly struggles, streaming media. I loaded up everyone's favorite streaming service, Paramount Plus, and the experience was, to put it nicely, not ideal. Browsing content was slow, with the content library taking quite some time to populate and the computer struggling to keep up. Once I found something to watch, load times were predictably slow and playback was jittery once the content finally did load. The playback experience ranged from barely even watchable to some titles failing to playback entirely. Moving on to playing back my own library of content on my Jellyfin server over the network, things were much smoother there. I had an easier time browsing an albeit smaller library, and load times were much faster, and playback was way smoother. I'm sure the server doing the transcoding definitely helped, but if you have a home server set up with Jellyfin, you'll have no problem streaming your, uh, home movie collection on a machine like this. Moving back to YouTube, where the experience was surprisingly good. Well, better than to be expected on a machine like this. Higher resolutions are definitely a no-go here, but playback of 720p video is quite smooth with very few dropped frames. For YouTube playback, this machine is usable if you're patient enough to wait through those load times. Now the biggest elephant in the room throughout this entire video was of course performance. It's not great. The poor CPU was constantly being put to its test, with even something like playback of a YouTube video pegging CPU usage. RAM is also an issue here, as 2GB is just not enough for web browsing these days, plain and simple. Chrome chewed through the RAM, with relatively few tabs open, and the swap space was constantly being used, and I could hear that mechanical hard drive churning away when just loading websites. Now, upgrading this laptop to the maximum of 6 gigs of RAM and throwing in an SSD would definitely help with performance, but with the CPU usage constantly being pegged, I'm not sure how much of a performance boost one can expect to see from those upgrades. Just for shits and giggles, I decided to run through a benchmark using the Speedometer 3.0 benchmark from BrowserBench.org, which measures the performance and responsiveness of web apps. After a painfully long benchmark experience, this laptop came out with a score of just 1.13. For reference, my iPhone 13 mini scored 12.3, and my M1 MacBook Pro scored 26.2. To torture this poor little guy even further, I ran the motion mark benchmark benchmark, also from browserbench.org, which measures graphics performance. And it achieved a score of 65.27 at 60 frames per second. The iPhone scored 4,278 and the MacBook scored 6,224 for comparison. Now I know browser benchmarks aren't a perfect indicator of a device's performance, and the way I compared this laptop to my phone and other laptop isn't the most scientific. Hell, I didn't even use Chrome on those devices. But the benchmarks do go to show just how far tech has progressed in the 16 years since this laptop was new, and they give a good way to measure just how hard this Core 2 Duo struggles to keep up with the modern web. In conclusion, would I recommend you go to eBay, buy the cheapest MacBook you can find, load up Chrome OS Flex, and expect a smooth, modern computing experience? No. No, I would not. Hell, boot times alone took almost a minute and a half, a far cry from the six seconds touted by Google. With that said, if you have one of these old MacBooks lying around and you're an absolute freak like I am, installing Chrome OS Flex is a fun way to experiment with this old hardware, and it's way more capable than I expected it to be, with it being able to accomplish most web tasks, albeit very slowly. So I would encourage you to try it for yourself. That being said, I'm far from done torturing this laptop. So stay tuned to future episodes where I plan to see if Linux can provide the push this laptop needs to enter the 2020s. There might even be some hardware upgrades in store for this little guy.